Hello, today we are going to do the moth on this flower cluster. You're gonna need your crimson, your green, and your yellow. And right now we're going to hinge the outline provided to the canvas panel. You have two pieces of tape or you can use the labels that we provide. Both sides. Then you're gonna reach for your transfer paper. You wanna make sure that is shiny, sticky side down just like that and then make sure it's lined up and grab a pen or the pencil that we provide and in this instance we're just going to go ahead and put pressure on the outer perimeter of the shapes in this case it's the flower cluster and the moth. So we're not going to do the interior detail. We're just going to go around the outer contours of the shapes. And that includes, if you look, some of these stems. We're going to go around some of the stems. And you'll be left with kind of the cookie cutter outside of the moth and the flower cluster. Just like that. Go ahead and pause, get all that in there. Now I'm reaching for the crimson. And I'm gonna go ahead and put just a touch of that in one of my wells. And we're just gonna wash in the entire shape with that crimson, just so that we know where it is, so we know where the stems begin and end, where the blossoms start, before we put in the background. And by wash, I'm mixing a lot of water with that drop of crimson. And this is just so that I have a visual indicator for myself that I know where my flower cluster begins and ends. I'm going to do the same thing with the moth with our green. Again, I'm putting just a drop on there. Kind of water it down with some water. You can go ahead and pause, make sure you have some, make sure you have your green on there. Do the exact same thing, fill in your moth. This is just a visual map so you know where things are. Go ahead and reach for your yellow. Drop a generous, it's kind of like a two, three, or four drops into one of your wells. Grab your green, same thing in one of your other wells and your big opaque covering white. Three different colors, three different wells. Grab your big brush. Right now, I'm reaching for the white. And what we're going to do is we're gonna apply some straight up white and then generously slap a leaf in an impasto abstract way, fold your colors into that white. There's no wrong way to do it, but if you start kind of with your white, it's gonna be a little bit more opaque, which is why I did. So now I'm going up and over the moth into the top part of my picture plane, into the side. There's gonna be some overlap, but that's why we went ahead and painted in the entire shape of the flower so that when everything dries, you'll still know where that begins and ends. And we're just doing some yellow. This can be any way you like it. You just wanna make sure you cover up all the tiny holes in the porous canvas panel. And what I did next was I just, I washed out my brush, but I got some of the water and I'm just kind of filling in, moving around some of the paint on the canvas with some water. And then we're gonna go ahead and let this dry. I went ahead and did it with a hair dryer. You can walk away from it, but this needs to be completely dry before you move on. I 
it's always going to dry a little bit darker, but also more transparent. So if you look, it already looks different now that it's getting more dry. Go ahead and pause, get all that done. So now I'm going to retransfer all of the interior parts of the moth and the flower cluster. And then you're looking at your own painting. If there's any of the exterior lines you want to include, go ahead and add those two right now. It's all still right there. So I'm spending, I'm taking my time and I'm spending a lot of time making sure I catch every single one of those blossoms, the centers, some of them have individual petals. You can use any writing utensil you like. Sometimes I like a blue pen just because you can see where you've been on the black and white outline. all the small individual stems, all the veining in the moth. Remember, we're using graphite transfer paper, so if you don't like some of these lines, you can certainly erase them. It's always easiest to erase, actually, on a surface that's already been painted because it's not getting absorbed into the pre-primed canvas panel. So if you lift this up and you're like, oh, that, you know, that's a stray mark or something like that, go ahead and try and erase it. It, it doesn't necessarily all come off, but it, it'll get you almost there. All right, so I'm taking everything apart and I'm gonna take a look at what I've got. And I like everything. Everything is exactly how I want it to look. Got all my lines there, go ahead and pause. And I'm reaching for my crimson and I'm gonna put a fairly generous drop of crimson into two different wells. And I'm reaching for my green, and one of those wells is getting a very generous drop of green. The crimson is more saturated than the green, so you kind of need more green to get a 50-50 mix. And so this is this really beautiful kind of army green. I want it a little bit greener than red army green neutral and that's going to be the color that we use for all these dark neutrals in the flower cluster so i'm starting with some of these big stems and it's all outlined for you from your transfer and i'm filling them in and eventually i'm going to want these very very opaque but it's going to take a couple coats so i'm just making sure i understand which ones i want this color So I'm hitting all of those areas first. Making it as even as possible, but if it's not quite the way I want it, we're gonna go back over it again and again, actually. Go ahead and pause, paint in your stems with your neutral. Now I'm reaching for my green and I'm just going to put that right back where I had it before. I need more of it. And I'm just going to paint in some of the veins of the moth that I really want to emphasize. And if you notice, I'm, I want the pencil lines to kind of show. I'm not trying to cover them up. I'm trying to sort of reinforce them. And they'll probably kind of show in the end. Go ahead and pause, get that in. Now I'm second coating all those neutrals with our kind of army green red color. And I'm adding some of that color to our existing crimson just a touch just to kind of mess it up a little bit so it doesn't look exactly like it came out of the tube. 
It's a little bit desaturated. And I'm going to paint in the rest of the stems to our flower cluster. And you can see the contrast there. There's our very red stems and our more neutral stems. Both are beautiful. And it's pretty much everything you didn't cover initially with the neutral green-red color. Green and red are complements. That's why they work so well in this instance to offset each other and make that neutral. And I added a little bit to the main stem. Go ahead and pause. Now I'm taking some of the existing white I had. If you need more, add more. And I'm adding some of our crimson mixture. It's very much mostly crimson. And we made a pink, a very light pink. And that's going to be our blossom color. And just kind of take your time and fill in your blossoms. This is going to be the most opaque color you've used so far. Our white is very opaque. It's a covering white. And all of your blossoms are this color. So just take your time and fill in your blossoms. Using my smallest brush right now. If you've kind of lost your blossoms for whatever reason, just make sure everything's dry and go ahead and retransfer them. That's why we keep it there. And I'm just making sure they are completely filled in and my lines are clean. A little bit of highlight on some of the stems. You can see where I'm doing that. Go ahead and pause. Reaching again for that green mixture, green and red neutral reinforcing the areas that are already there because I want them nice and dense and opaque. You may not need it. Same for the redder areas, catching them both, but I want all of that nice and opaque. Go ahead and pause. Big brush. Get it nice and wet. Dip into your white. This is a glazing technique. Make sure your moth is completely dry and I'm adding a glaze, a thin veil of our covering white. And I'm very evenly applying it on top of what we've already painted. Our greens are gonna glow right through there and it's gonna create this kind of translucent, almost iridescent look. Let's go ahead and let that dry and fill in the areas you want very, very green. If it's not quite dry, it looks like I'm scumbling some of this in here, so both approaches work. Scumbling is just when you kind of mix something into something that's already wet. And I'm just going over some of the lines I really want to reinforce on our moth. The body, some of the veining, little legs, going up into top wing reaching for the neutral and basically all the areas I want a little bit darker and a little bit more warm and not quite so green, more brown or desaturated. I'm using that neutral we already mixed for the flower. Need to make more, you know how to make it. And that's the body, the legs, the antennas, the tops of both wings and some of the veins. 
and you're looking at your own painting, where it needs it, where it needs to be a little bit darker and a little bit less green from the tube. A little more neutral. Catching all the areas I might have missed, go ahead and pause. Do that. Now I'm gonna reach for my red mixture, my crimson red mixture that I've been working from if you need to make more. And I'm adding that to my existing pink because I want a darker, more pink, more pigmented color to add the dark sides to all of my blossoms. And it's everywhere you see darker in your reference to make your blossoms look more defined. So these are the dark sides of the blossoms. And I'm filling them in. with our darker pink. And now I'm reaching just for that same red mixture and dropping centers into your blossom flowers. It's that red center. Every one of them gets one and I'm just putting those in right where I think they go in the middle of all of my blossoms. And anywhere else that needs a little bit of a touch up with that red while it's on my brush now I'm adding that same red into the moth, all the areas that need this warmer definition. It's going to be the darkest color we've used there so far. And I'm putting that on tops of the wings, the antennas, that round mark on the top wing. And I'm just kind of evening it out with a little bit of water. really hitting a few of the sort of stripey lines I want to make sure look very defined on the top wing and that round mark. I want this very dry because I'm going to do a glazing technique over the moth in a minute. So I'm making sure it's dry. You can always walk away. But we need this bone dry. Go ahead and pause. Do all of that. Reach for your water. Get into the straight up yellow. And your yellow is always gonna be more of a gel. And in this instance, we're gonna use it just like that. And we're gonna glaze right over the moth wings. And I'm kind of working from the left side in on both wings and the body. And we're really getting this really beautiful glowing texture. I'm also highlighting some parts of the blossom cluster. And now I'm doing kind of the same thing with the white. All the areas I want to look really white, I'm hitting with the white and some water in the moth, in the wings. and you are looking at your own painting, you know where it needs to go. But with all of these transparent, translucent layers, we're getting this really beautiful, translucent kind of iridescent moth. Some of the body. All of this I'm doing with my white. I'm gonna highlight some parts of the blossoms with just some straight up white where I want it to be the lightest. Final highlights on the stems. with white and a little bit of water in this instance. Go ahead and pause, get all that in. Now I decided to sign it with my neutral and there you are. Look at the moth you made, sign it and display it. And thanks for doing time for art today.